we studied two species of vultures. They're both gyps vultures, which are really social um, species. They were the Rupel's vulture and the African whiteback vulture. And our study site was in Kenya, in the Lycapia district of Kenya. Um, this is, has, is home to quite a, a, an array of scavengers and just it's quite dense in terms of its wildlife in Africa. But the experimental setup was that we'd have a lot of uh, experimental carcasses laid out for our study, for the express purpose of our study. So we'd have cattle or whatever in the field and we could record these animals and their interactions at the carcass. I think the public perception of vultures is quite negative in that they, you know, they see these animals as eating decay and carrion. But what they might not know is that there's a huge, they've suffered a huge decline recently. Like over 90% of the birds in the Indian subcontinent have disappeared over maybe a 10 year period. In Africa, where I was based, there's directed poisoning as well. Um, other things that cause the decline are um, collisions with electricity pylons, wind turbines. There's a lot of um, African medicinal purposes as well um, that le leads to like black market um, swapping of vulture body parts. In Swaziland, there's things like vulture brains can grant clairvoyance. One of the unusual things about this study um, piece of research that we did was that we were able to combine the use of mathematical models with computational models in conjunction with sort of the classical get out there in the field with your binoculars and your video cameras to study what's going on. And what we, so what we did with the behavioural observations was we were able to put out carcasses in, out into the wild and observe the, 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 the times at which the different species arrived. So this we were able to then show through our analyses that the eagles tend to come first, followed then by the vultures. So then that got us sort of thinking is, well, why do eagles keep playing this game? Why do eagles keep bothering to find carcasses when they could just go off and hunt something else instead? So to answer this, we had to go to a field of uh, mathematical modelling from, borrowed from economic game theory to ask, well, why should, you know, what, what are the costs and benefits to playing different strategies? And why should the eagles keep playing this role of finding carcasses? And the answer comes down really to the fact that they can get, uh, they can get there, if they get there quick enough and it takes the vultures long enough to cut descend down, they get a sort of a finder's fee, so they get to have a large portion of food at the beginning. And using, the, using these models then, we were able to show that this is evolutionarily stable, so that it's just about good enough for the eagles, that they will keep playing this game and keep playing this role, and for the vultures, it's a win-win. Often we only realise when it's all too late that these animals and plants tend to provide an awful lot of services that we rely on as people. And in the case of vultures, they provide a recycling service, essentially going around uh, cleaning up the environment of dead carcasses. And these dead carcasses can be a problem. Often these, these large carcasses can contain some really quite nasty infectious diseases like anthrax and botulism that can cause a real problem to any animal that comes along and eats it, such as, so lions really can, have a, can be wiped out um, in, very quickly by anthrax uh, poisoning. But also obviously for humans coming into contact with these materials as well. There's a nice example of um, humans relying on uh, vultures for cultural reasons. So in the Tibetan region, we have, uh, a, a, there's a group of Buddhists there who believe that when you die, your body should be given back to the sky so that you're recycled essentially back out into the, uh, out into the ecology and the ecosystem around you. It's really quite lovely. When they take their dead and they bring them up and they offer them on the mountains to these vultures and the vultures come and pick the bones clean and pick the body clean and in this way, you literally return to the sky. Um, but now they're finding that their cultural practices are threatened because of the huge drop in numbers there in that region of these vultures. I think the main thing to take from this study is that we need to have like, integrated conservation management. I think in general it's to, to take note that no animal or no species exists in isolation and that you need to look at all the interactions it can have and for scientists we need to like it should be our aim to conserve these animals. If we want to study them in the future, we need to conserve them. So the best way to do that is to keep the ecosystem sustained.